Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all stand and let's open up the service with some praise and worship. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 3 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let's worship and praise him right now. Thank you, Lord. Coming to your presence today. Hallelujah. Lord, you are worthy of praise. Oh, we exalt you, Lord. We lift up your name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we love you, God. We love you, God. We're going to pray for God's will to be done in this place today. Amen. As I was driving to uh, over to the church this morning, this scripture, actually two scriptures came to my mind, and I was thinking about our desire for God's will. And one was in Matthew chapter 8, where it said, Behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And sometimes we come with a question of what God's will is. Amen for us. And we need our faith to be increased. But then I read in John chapter 5 where Jesus approached a man who had been laying there by the pool of Bethesda for so many years. And he approached him and said, Will thou be made whole? Yes. And I believe that God has a concern today, and that is what is our will right. for this service. Yes. Right. Yes. He wants us to desire things of him. He wants us to believe and trust yes. in him. I want you to pray right now that our minds be brought together in this service today, that each one of us would be open to what God wants to do in our lives today through this service. Would you pray that with me right now? Lord Jesus, we know, God, that your will, and we know that it's your will to heal. We know that it's your will to save and deliver today. And we pray, God, in this service that you would help us to align our will with your will. As Brother Ryan preached last week, we need to come here expecting something, to receive something from you, Lord. And we pray today, God, you would help us just to be mindful and to know, God, that we're in your presence. Hallelujah. Where your spirit is, Lord, there is liberty and there is deliverance and there is freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you the praise today. Have your way in this place. If you want his will to be done in your life today, why don't you just clap your hands unto the Lord right now. Praise God. Praise God.
scripture once, but I wrote it down as well, and we didn't plan that out, but it just happened that way. But it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Yes. Let's talk just for a minute about that word, magnify. In the dictionary, that word means to make something bigger than it is, or than it appears to be. But God is bigger than what we could even ever make him be. We don't need to make him bigger than he is necessarily. But sometimes, on the other hand, we really do. Because sometimes we forget to make God first in our life and to magnify him and to glorify him and to lift him up and make him bigger in our lives than we have in the maybe recent past. So this is what it means when it says, oh, magnify or glorify or lift him up yes. or focus intently on magnifying and lifting up God and making Praise him bigger God. in your situation yes. than what he is yes. maybe Hallelujah. already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's do that right now. Let's magnify Jesus together. Let's lift him up in this place and make him bigger than all of the things that we brought in here.
Hallelujah. We praise you, God. Aren't you thankful today for His grace and His mercy in your own life, even though we're so unworthy of it? God never fails to give it to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Our community, Brother Anthony Trimble, also he has 
cancer and these are miracles in his life and in his body today. And I think that covers all the needs that have um, been given to me today. If you have a need today, you can just lift your hands to the Lord today and give that need to him. And he will come by and he will touch you and he will touch your need. And let's pray together for all of these needs. There are many of them today. And let's just reach out for these people who need God to touch their body, touch their life today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. We come to your throne. We come boldly to you. Because we know that you heal. And we know that you deliver, God. In the name of Jesus right now, I pray for Robbie Northrop, God, that you would touch his body. I pray for brother and sister Lydia and brother and sister Robinson, God. You see their situation in the room. You know, God, what they need and what kind of touch they need in their bodies. We pray for Cheryl and Chance's friends, Pam and Jill, that have COVID. Lord, we pray that you would touch them. God, we believe and we know that you are bigger than any pandemic. You are bigger than any virus, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray for Cheryl right now, Lord. She has issues. Her heart and her love of God. You made the body. You can heal the body. In the name of Jesus, I pray for Sister Michelle and Grandpa Gerald right now, Lord. She would touch his mind, touch his body today. He needs you in his life tonight. Hallelujah. I pray for Brother Anthony Tremble, God. He truly needs a miracle from you, God. And I know that you are able and that you want to perform miracles. And you want to be glorified through all of these situations. In the name of Jesus, I pray for Pepsico right now and the surrounding community. Lord, I pray that you would just move and that you would work, God, throughout this community, Lord. You need each one of us, God, as your willing vessels, God, to go out and to do your work and to bring people into your presence, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray all these things. Hallelujah. I worship you,
Anybody's got your mind made up today? I'm not going back. You have to have a made up mind. Because the temptation is there every single day. To go back into the pit. Go back into the miry clay from which you've been delivered. And I heard someone say, a minister friend of mine, uh, talking about the scripture where where it was said that if a man puts his hand to the plow and looks back, that he's not fit for the kingdom of God. And he was troubled because, uh, you can be seated for a moment, pray to you, just stay where you are for a moment here. But he was troubled because um, it was being preached that, uh, and there were certain people that were not being used in the church because they had struggled and, and uh, been inconsistent. And so the, the pastor there had taken that scripture and he said, you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. And I got to thinking on that scripture and I thought, I don't think that was really the point. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people who never went back, yes. but I don't know anybody, I don't know anybody that's never looked back. Yeah. I don't know anybody that's never faced a temptation to say, you know what, I think I'll just throw in the towel. Amen. If you're here today, please don't raise your hand because I don't want to call you a liar in front of God and everybody. Yeah. Amen. I just don't believe those people exist. I believe the overall picture of that was the mercy of God Amen. that he still works with us. He's yes. mindful of us. He knows our frame. Amen. He remembers that we are dust and he loves us anyway. But I want my mind to be made up today that regardless of what temptations I face and how discouraged I may feel in a moment, I do not want to go back, no. amen, to what the Lord brought me from. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I don't ever want to go back. Amen. amen. Brother Larry Carter sings a song and says, My worst day now is better than my best day then. Amen. 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 This life I live for Jesus is hallelujah. better than those years I spent amen. in sin. Do you feel that way today? Amen. And that's why we ought to come in here and bring a sacrifice yes. of praise, whether we feel like it or whether we don't, because we're making a statement that says, I'm not going back. That's right. Amen. Go ahead, sister. Yeah, I want to just share a praise report. There's been a lot of prayer offered up um, in our, for our family, and there has been a reconciliation. And so now we're just praying that they will move forward and come back to the Lord. Praise right. God. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I look across this building today, and of course, as it's been every week of this summer, we've never all been here at the same time, yeah. and uh, I now understand what my old pastor used to say about when school gets back in. He was excited about school getting back in, yeah. and I'm excited about school starting back so we can get settled back in today. Yeah. But I'm thankful today. We have several guests here. Thankful for Brother Owen's parents with us in service today, yeah. and uh, good to have um, Brother Ron back from his trip, and good to have... Donnie and Brenda today, not all these are guests, they're home folks, but uh, we're glad that they're back um, in the house of the Lord with us today, and uh, good to have Sister Ruthie with us, and in walked and made my day, Brother DeMarcus, right. amen, Brother amen. DeMarcus, thank God, thank you. this is one of our job corps students, and one of a few that stays in touch with me all the time, amen. and gives me a phone call and asks how I'm doing. And we're Praise praying God. for that Job Corps Center to be able to open back up yes. and go back in and, and minister. Amen. Brother DeMarcus, why don't you stand and just leave a quick praise for the Lord today. Amen. Uh, my name is DeMarcus Fertile. I graduated from Mingle Job Corps, one of, uh, probably one of the best job corps I've been to. Uh, I, I'm Fertile Frank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back there. <laughs> Let's turn around. I love that man right there. He came. To, he came to get me every single morning. You know, like I was asleep, and he was like, "Hey, the march on my way. I had to hurry up and get up and get ready." And I was like, and I went on to Clearfield Job Corps, where one of the other brothers that was here, Brian Pines, shout out to Marty yeah. and yeah. Church Out Family, you should know about him. Yeah. Um, he brought me to here, and I love this church. When yeah, I tell you, good. I love yeah. this church. I I wouldn't go to no other church, well, besides the other home church, but this was my job for church, yeah. you know, so I didn't look back, I came back. Praise you know, God. I came back here, it was not because God told me to, it was just because 
I love y'all guys. I miss y'all guys. Being up there in Clearfield, you know, not seeing y'all guys every day, had to get on the phone, looking at Pastor Martin. I'm like, I want to be here. I don't want to look at y'all guys. <laughs> yeah. I want I want to be here. And you know, I left Job Corps, and ever since I left Job Corps, I've been successful. As you can see, I work for Central Casino. I'm a blackjack dealer, and I'm happy with my job. Everything that I've done from the time that I was in Job Corps until the time that I got out of Job Corps, I've been successful. You know, it can be a Job Corps some, cannot be for everybody, but it was for me. I succeeded. I got a skill set, and I made it. Thank but I you, yeah. just couldn't be above. That man above. I promise you, it's nothing that he can't do for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand up for praise. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Yeah. I have the praise team stay put, not because they're going to sing again, but every week I, when we do announcements, um, I do them at the most inopportune times, or so I've been told. And so, and when I dismiss the praise team, they're going to be all moving around, and maybe one or two have to go to the restroom. And somebody always says, "We didn't know anything about any of that." <laughs> so, uh, so if I can just remember to communicate this to my wife, who's teaching Sunday school, we'll be okay. This coming Saturday, Servolution. At 10 a.m., Servolution Outreach, we're excited about this. We had a great outreach last month, and this month we're going to be going out to the community and ministering uh, to the kids, uh, taking them some popsicles, ice cream, what have you, and finding out where all the children are at in the community right now before school starts so that we can start getting them uh, back in here in the fall. So that's going to start at 10 a.m. Everybody say 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And that is this Saturday. Amen. And uh, so our small groups are coming together for that. Instead of having their own group in August, we will go back to having our uh, our various groups uh, at different times during the last couple weeks of the month. Uh, but for most of our groups, that'll be our group. Um, if you are not in one of those groups that's coming together, make sure you check with your group leader. I do know uh, Sister Jennifer's group will be meeting on this Thursday, um, and we may have another group out there that if you're not in these other groups that are taking part, make sure you touch base with your group leader. On Saturday, the August, August the 7th, that is the week before homecoming, it'll be our last opportunity. We need to have another demo day, and we need every volunteer that's available to come and help, especially the men, um, because we've got to take turns holding on to that jackhammer. And that's not going to be any fun. We've got to bust out um, what's left of this foundation over here in this house and get it all thrown in the dumpster. We need to clean up as much of that as we can on that last day before uh, homecoming. And then, of course, the next week after that, school will be starting up. And then I'm excited to tell you about this August the 29th. Everybody say August 29th. Sure. That's the last Sunday of, of the month of August. We're going to be having revival service with Mark Morris. You do not want to miss this service. It's going to be a remarkable day. And I know that because I know this man's testimony. And I know you're thinking uh, it's someone that was delivered from drugs. It was somebody that had a wild lifestyle. That's not going to be the testimony. But you're going to hear a testimony from <coughs> Brother Morris that I believe is going to change your life. And I believe there's people in this church right now that you are not emotionally well. You know, God wants us to be whole. And you cannot be physically whole for long if you're not emotionally well. And your emotions are going to affect, your emotional health is going to affect your mental health, your physical health, everything about you. And sometimes we ignore those wounds that are in our spirit and we try to cover them over. But God wants to heal us and restore us in every area. And you don't want to miss. Invite somebody there will not be one person, I promise you, if they come to that service, they will be affected by this man's testimony. So don't forget that. August the 29th, revival service, a good way to kick off the fall. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, December the 18th, just save the date, okay? We're not getting any details really about it, but save the date. It's going to be our Christmas uh, program, our Christmas show. It'll be on a Saturday night, and we're doing something different this year. We're bringing in a Christian comedian uh, that is going to be the headliner for our Christmas show. And uh, so that's going to be 
an awesome time and we're planning to do the thing we did before where we have dinner uh, before the show or after the show and so we'll be giving more details about that but just go ahead and save the date December the 18th will be the date we didn't get to do it at all last year because of COVID but we're believing this year it will it will work amen we'll dismiss the praise team we're getting ready to hear the word of the Lord today I do want to mention to you that there's a magazine rack back there on the back table and some of you have probably been wondering what that is or how much those magazines cost or what have you they don't cost anything but there's a couple of magazines that are really good there have a lot of encouraging articles in them if you want to take a magazine home and read it just take it bring it back and let someone put it back there and someone else can take it and read it so those are for you but if you take them try to remember to bring them back so that others can enjoy them as well. Amen. Aren't you thankful for the Lord today? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for bearing along with me with the announcements. And now Brother Owen is coming to minister the word of the Lord today. Aren't you thankful for Brother Owen? Amen. And Sister Mariah. I they to our church tonight in the youth department. And uh, most of you probably don't know this, but uh, Brother Reagan just received his ministerial license um, here, I guess, last week. And... Um, Brother Owen is next on the list. He's been studying, and uh, this is what most of you probably don't know. He's been taking online college courses with uh, Christian Service Training Institute based in San Diego, and that shows his desire yes. uh, to further himself in the ministry. Amen. Amen. And so he's on that same track of developing into what God wants him to be, and God's going to use him mightily. It already yes. is. Do you agree? Amen. Amen. Do you agree? Amen. I just want to say one more thing here. I know I'm taking too much time, but um, the most important thing for every person in this room to do, and I, I say this with deep conviction, you've got to answer the call of God right. that is on your life. There Amen. is not one person Amen. in this room that is not called of God. Right. I don't mean you're called to stand behind this desk, but every person has a calling of God, and the reason why that there's probably at least one or two people in every church service that are completely miserable. Mm -hmm. It's not because there's anything wrong with the salvation that you got. It's not that what God did for you was insufficient, but it's simply that God has something more for you, and you are running from that, and you are not doing what he has called you to do. I want to encourage every young person yes. to yes. find your calling, and not Amen. just them, every elder, every Amen. adult. Let's find our calling and respond to it. I promise you that if you will do that, you will be happy. You may not have everything go well in your life, but you're going to be content in God if you're doing the will of God. Is that all right? Amen. Yeah. Man, you've got to do the will of our Father, and anything outside of that, we can do whatever, fill our life up with all kinds of things, and we will be miserable. But if we will choose the will of God, I promise you that things are going to happen that are great. And I say that today because um, there's a burden on me for us to start and plant more churches in southeast Missouri. Yes. And we need young men and young women, and we need elder saints. We need everyone to support Amen. the work of God. We've got some things going on as a section, as a region that we're going to be a part of. And uh, it's important. If you want to do a work for God, uh, you've got to submit to his call upon your life. Brother Owen, come and preach the word. Why don't you clap your hands and thank Amen. the Lord Amen. for somebody that's the call today. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank Pastor for the opportunity to come up here and to speak today. And thank each and every one of you guys for the encouraging words that you give me. It really, really helps. And you can probably already tell, but I'm really nervous. So just bear with me. But I believe that God has a word for us today. Amen. Amen. Can we turn to Acts 16, verse 23 through 28? Give everybody a minute to get there. Beginning of verse 23, it says, And when they laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. 
and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors were open, he drew out his sword that he would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do that thyself no harm, for we are all here. Can we take a moment and pray? God, speak to us today. God, help us, God, to receive your word. God, give us an open heart and mind to your word. God, help us, God, to be receptive to whatever you want to do here today. God, help us, God, to respond however you would have us to. Lord, have your way through me in this service. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. to give a little bit of context to this scripture. We see Paul and Silas are thrown into prison. They're, beat, they're thrown into prison and then a jailer's told keep them in there, make sure they don't get out. So, what in the world did they do to get thrown into prison? I just want to talk about that for a minute. Here. So pretty much they were put there from the testimony of two men who were using a young girl for her fortune telling abilities I guess you could say she had a spirit of divination yes. and it says that it actually says that Paul got annoyed with her following them around and saying uh, these are men of the most high God he gets annoyed with this and casts her out and they realize that their money making days are done for so they get aggravated and they throw a bunch of accus accusations around that that they're teaching unlawful things, that they're going around the city causing trouble. So, a lot of things lead up to them getting thrown into prison. But, the real reason why I believe they were in prison is for the will of God. Yes. I know that may sound crazy, but whenever we get deeper into this, you'll see where I'm going with that. So, Verse 25 says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm in prison, singing praises to God, you know, I, I hope that I'm there. Yeah. But, you know, to some of us, that might, that might not be the first thing on our mind. So I just want to take a minute and look at at why you know why were they singing praises to God in this dark inner prison? Acts chapter five, beginning at verse eighteen and nineteen, says, "And they laid their hands upon the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life." Here we see an angel open the doors of a prison and let yes. the apostles out. Yes. In Acts chapter 12, verses 5 and 8, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church of God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord came upon him and shined a light in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said to him, Gird thyself and bind thy sandals. So he did. And he said to him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow thee. So, whenever I ask the question of why were Paul and Silas able to, to sing praises, to God in the middle of a prison. I believe it's because they heard the testimony of the apostles and Peter. They knew, yeah, I'm I'm in prison. It's dark. It's scary. But I've heard about what God can do. I've heard that doors can be open and that chains can be broken. So I'm not afraid. Amen. Amen. They trusted God no matter what situation they were in. And they knew that the God that they served was able to deliver them. Amen. 
So now what, what I'm about to do, and this is going to seem really unconventional, but we're going to talk about seismology. And you guys are probably like, what in the world is he talking about? Yeah. Brother Frank, you know what that is? All right. Seismology is a branch of science concerned with earthquakes and their related phenomena. I'm not talking about just earthquakes in general. I'm talking about this earthquake, yeah. the earthquake in Acts chapter 16. Yeah. So what happened whenever Paul and Silas went through this earthquake? Everyone's chains were loose. Yeah. Not just theirs, but everybody in the prison. Yeah. All of the doors were open. Amen. Not just Paul and Silas's, but everybody around them. Everybody in that prison had the chance to escape. Yes. But somehow, by the grace of God or the jailer, they were all still there. Yeah. Another question I want to ask is, did it take the earthquake to lose their chains and freedom? I've read this scripture multiple times, and I've always just read it and been like, oh, you know, the earthquake shook and you know, probably shook so hard it broke their chains, opened the doors. Yeah, that probably did happen. But did it take the earthquake to loose their chains and free them? No. We had already seen from Peter and the apostles that God can use whatever method he wants to to deliver. It didn't have to be an earthquake. But he decided to use an earthquake. And I believe it was for altogether different use. Now, it shook Paul and Silas. They were, I mean, they were in an earthquake. Strong enough, it said it shook the foundation of the prison. I don't know the earthquake scale, but I'm assuming it would be pretty high up there. Yeah. It shook them, but it didn't shake their faith. Yeah. Regardless of if they knew it was the plan of God, that they still had to go through that earthquake. Yeah. Right. But it didn't make them so scared that they ran out as soon as the door was open in fear for their lives, worrying about how God was going to deliver them, how they was going to get out of this earthquake. In life, we're going to face earthquakes. Right. Right. But if we can realize that God is in control, they won't be nearly as terrifying as what they seem. Right. Psalm 46, verse 1 through 3 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not, will not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. If we have the mindset that God is in control, God is our refuge, yes. God is a very present help in trouble. Whenever we go through those earthquakes, we'll have the ability to stand strong and not go running out the door and be able to help those that are around us. Yeah. Now I want to go back to Acts 16. After the earthquake happens, the jailer is about to kill himself, and Paul says, wait, we're all still here. Right. Let's go back to that. So verse 29 says, Then he called for a light, that is, the jailer, and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the surgeons, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told the saying to Paul, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart, go in peace. So the real question that I want to ask today is who was the earthquake for? Let's look at this. Who was the earthquake for? We've already established God could have used 
any other means to deliver Paulin's Silas. He didn't have to use the earthquake to break the chains and open the doors. He could have used an angel of the Lord. He could have used another person that he spoke to. And when you think about it, verse 35 tells us, in reality, the earthquake really didn't free them. Whenever the magistrates sent, saying, let those men go, that's when they were truly free. They were still being watched. They were still, they may have been in a different location, but they were still considered prisoners. Yeah. So what, what purpose did the earthquake serve? All of the other prisoners, they were all still there. They didn't all run out. So why, why was there an earthquake? I believe it was for the jailer. He woke up from the violent shaking to see that all the prisoners had had a chance to get away, but they were all still there. And I believe he realized that all that had, to, had something to do with Paul and Silas singing and praising God. And that's why he ran in there and said, men and brethren, or sirs, what must I do to be saved? So I ask you this question today. Who is your earthquake for? There are many situations in our lives that feel like earthquakes. We go through life, life happens, situations happen. But if we're going to be, if we can stand strong whenever the dust clears, declare that God was in control and God was faithful Amen. through it all, who will be able to run to us and say, what must I do to be saved? Whenever the people around us hear that our foundation might have been shaken, but it wasn't strong enough to shake the faithfulness of our God, that's why we're going to go through some earthquakes. You may be wondering, what, you know, what exactly am I talking about? What kind of earthquakes am I talking about? What, what am I talking about standing strong through it? I'm talking about Sister Emily, getting in the pulpit in Arizona yes. and saying, yeah, I've been through some stuff, mm -hmm. but my God was bigger than it all. Right. Yes. My God yeah. is in control of it all, and all he right. has a plan right. through it all. That's what I'm Amen. talking about. Right. So today, if you find yourself in chains, Look at what Paul and Silas did. Yes. They had the testimony of Peter and the apostles. Sure. They knew what God was able to do. Yeah. And if you're in chains today in this place, we can have testimony service. There's people here that have had chains broken. I can tell you personally, I've heard multiple testimonies. Chains can be broken. So if you're in this place, do what Paul and Silas did. Praise him in advance. Because Amen. he can't break your chains. Yes. If you're Amen. in the middle of an earthquake, don't lose faith that God is in control. That's right. Although it may seem like everything is falling down around you, don't let it get to you. Amen. God may be using that to break chains and open doors in your life. And if you've had an earthquake, start to look for who that earthquake was for. I'm not discounting the fact that you can have chains broken and you can have doors open in your earthquake. But start to look for who you can use that testimony to win. Right. Start to look for the people in your life who that earthquake was for. Sure. <clears throat> These altars are open. I think it'd be good if we just took a moment and did that and praise God Amen. for breaking our chains. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And began to seek after the spirit of, of who we need yes. to look for in our lives, of who our earthquakes have been for. Amen. Don't don't let your earthquake, don't let those those world shaking situations be for nothing. Amen. Use Amen. them for the kingdom of God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
unsettled in your life. Let's just fill these altars up today and give those needs to the Lord. Hallelujah, we give those needs to you, God. Drive side. 